Hello, my name is Steven, and welcome to my tutorial for the Abyss web server. Abyss is a product of Aprelium, and today we're going to be talking about setting up HTTPS, or secure connections, for our web server, getting a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Thankfully, Abyss makes this incredibly easy. As you can see, they want to advertise this feature very heavily, where you can get automated free certificates from Let's Encrypt. And so let's see how to do that. Here I have an Abyss web server running out on the internet. I've just set it up a few moments ago. And you can see our demo page is working. The default Abyss page comes up. And we're running on port 80. Now we're not running on port 443, which is the HTTPS default port. And so we're going to talk about how to do that. All right, well, the first thing you need to do, and this is very important, don't skip this, you need to set an A record for your domain. So you have to have a domain name and then you have to set up an A record. Here I have this domain that I'm working with at the moment. And you can see these are A records here and this is my DNS records for my domain. Now if you wonder how do I set an A record, you can get simple directions. Just go to Google Type in your domain registrar here, GoDaddy, Namecheap, one and one or whatever you're using. Set domain A record, and there you go. They want to make this very easy for you to do because they want you to uh, buy domains from them and set it up with them. All right, so that's easy to take care of, setting an A record. For Namecheap, I can set all sorts of records here. I set an A record, and the domain I'm going to work with is demo at goto.rip and so the host is demo uh, you put in the IP address here and then the TTL you can usually leave alone but it really doesn't matter where you set it uh, this just tells us how long the uh, DNS servers will cache the data before it checks with Namecheap's name servers to get the official answer and so usually leaving it automatic is fine and then you just make sure you make your changes and you're good to go. All right, so one more step. You need to make sure that the internet can reach your site. And so we just have an IP address here. I'm going to type in the website here. And you can see it works with our uh, host also, our domain. So that doesn't automatically tell you that it's internet reachable though. Now usually it does, but here's another step you should take, and this is wise to do. Go to Google, type in W3C Validator, which the website is validator.w3.org, and type in your URL and the address, and hit check. And this will make sure that their servers can connect to your server and they want to tell you warnings and errors. But this just tells us that they were able to make contact with our website. So that means we're good to go now. Now, if for some reason they can't connect to you, then there's a chance you need to do port forwarding, and that would be in your router settings. And you can, again, go to Google. You can type in your router model number, and then follow that with port forwarding tutorial and you should get some good information there. Uh, you want to forward port 80, and then you also want to forward port 443. And if it gives you an option of TCP or UDP, uh, you want to select TCP. So now we come back to the Abyss console, and there are a few steps we need to do first before we uh, can run HTTPS. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to SSL slash TLS certificates. We have to generate a private key that we're going to use with an Acme account with Let's Encrypt. Uh, if you don't understand what I just said, just follow along and do what I do. So I, I already generated a private key for the console, because as you can see, running this out over the internet, I want to run this over an encrypted connection. But for our uh, Acme account with Let's Encrypt, we need to create a second private key that will only be used for the Let's Encrypt private key. So we need to create a name. 
and I'm just going to call this uh, let's encrypt uh, private key. Action is generate. This will be 2048 bits. And there it is. Now we need to go back to the console. We're going to go under host, our default host. We go to configure. We're going to go to the general tab. And under protocol, we want to select HTTP plus HTTPS. So we have our ports set. They look good, the standard defaults. Certificate type from an Acme account. Well, it says we don't have an Acme account declared. So we need to click here to create one. Now to make things easier, I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. And we're going to create an Acme account. So we need to create a name. This name isn't important. It's just for your identification. And the directory URL looks good. You can, if you're using a different provider, uh, you can select other and fill in the appropriate information. But private key, there we go. We want to select the one we made only for this purpose. And Abyss documentation tells you that this private key shouldn't be used for any other reason. And for our contact email, I just put in a dummy account. Uh, but you do want to put in your email address. And what they will do is when your hosts that you create certificates for uh, get close to expiring, if you have not renewed them, they will send you an email and let you know. And so then you can figure out what went wrong after that and hopefully renew it before it expires. And so we hit OK. We create our Acme account. And that leads us to some parameters and the defaults are fine. And so now we have a Let's Encrypt account. And now we go back, we can close this tab, go back to the general, and I'm just going to refresh. And then we want to choose from an Acme account. Now we have an Acme account. And now I'm going to add a host name. And for your host name, you're going to put in your website as the internet would reach it. So demo.goto.rip for my purposes here. And we hit OK. And now we hit restart. And of course, this always takes a while. Okay, now we're back, and in the time that it took to come back to this page, we now have a certificate. As you notice, under status, it says running. If you're still waiting on a certificate and things are running a little slower, it'll say waiting for a certificate underneath running. So now we can test out our secure site. I'll go back to my Abyss web server page. And I'll tack on HTTPS colon slash slash. And you'll see now we have our encrypted icon there. And underneath this in Chrome, you can click the lock icon and you can look at the certificate. It says it is valid. It's issued to demo.goto.rip, which is my site. And you'll see the uh, length of time that it's validated for, which should be 90 days. And so for me, it will expire on... October 31st. And there's a little more information. And now as October 31st approaches, which is when this certificate will expire, Abyss will automatically renew it. Now, actually, it will do it after 60 days. That's the default setup. And that's what Let's Encrypt encourages. And so you have a month for Abyss to be restarted so that it can take advantage of the new certificate. Now, if perchance you don't restart your server in between months two and three, Abyss will automatically restart itself uh, when it's time to use a new certificate. And so really, you don't even have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to deal with a command line or any parameters. Uh, Abyss just sets it up and it works. So it doesn't get any easier than that. And so now we have successfully established an HTTPS connection with our Abyss server. Now, what if you want to force all of your visitors to your HTTP site 
over to your HTTPS site. How do you do that? Abyss makes this very simple. Uh, let's configure the host. We go to general. Under advanced parameters, we hit edit. And then we go to exclusively serve on HTTPS. So we're going to click add. Now you can add different places. Uh, you can hit browse. You could pick a folder if you have a folder that you want to be served only using HTTPS. You can pick one particular uh, web resource. Or if you want to make it everything, you can just use an asterisk. And so we hit OK, and OK, and OK again. It gives us the option to restart. And then when you go to the HTTP site, it will automatically force you over to the HTTPS site. Now before you do that, just one thing to consider here. Okay, brought up an incognito window here. Here I have the secure site, and here I have just the HTTP site. And the reason I did it was to show you the timing. Now you notice here the DNS lookup, that's already been done, it's cached at my router. But you notice in the initial connection, this is the HTTPS one up here, the initial connection is 128 milliseconds and our SSL took 90 seconds to initiate. Now if you're doing a regular HTTP load, you don't have this SSL. So you see the initial connection here is only 38 milliseconds. And that's about the difference between these two values here. And so just know that when you opt for HTTPS, and if you opt for HTTPS only, it's going to take a little bit longer for your uh, visitors to access your page because it has to negotiate SSL. And that takes, I'm not sure if it's one or two round trips. And you can figure out a round trip time by pinging your host. But also remember your visitors could be anywhere in the world. And if they happen to have a really bad connection and say 500 milliseconds, uh, it might take them a second longer to load up your page just simply due to the SSL. But obviously one of the big benefits, and I'll bring back up the incognito window here. One of the benefits is that you see a lock icon in Chrome instead of a not secure display here. And so HTTPS is definitely a good idea to enable. If you want to force it, uh, that's fine also, especially if you're dealing with sensitive information. Uh, if you have a contact form, that would be something you always want to serve on HTTPS no matter what. Uh, you wouldn't want users to start entering information and they see it's not secure, that might scare them away. And HTTPS also gives you the added benefit of improved search rankings in Google. Uh, actually, Google deprioritizes requests that are made to websites that are not secure. So the choice is yours, uh, but it's definitely a plus to be able to enable HTTP and HTTPS uh, with Let's Encrypt on Abyss. Very simple. And so we've looked at setting up an HTTPS uh, website with Let's Encrypt. We have talked about how to force uh, HTTPS to your visitors. And that about wraps up this tutorial. And so I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time.